Yeah, we're back on the Sports Max Zone. Trinidad and Tobago's midfield ace Kevin Molino has announced his retirement from international football. Molino, who has been capped 60 times by the Soka Warriors with 23 goals to his credit, made the announcement via social media on Friday. His sudden retirement came on the eve of a TNT release, releasing a provisional squad for the two upcoming Nations League matches against Curacao and El Salvador, scheduled for the 7th of September and the 10th of September. Lasana Leibert is managing editor of 868 Wired, based in TNT, and he's been tracking this story. Lasana, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone again. And um, Molino uh, leaves the arena internationally, um, but there was a part of his uh, social media post that suggested something like, for now, as if he could reconsider at some point. What's your take on how he's feeling at the moment? Uh, well, of course, I, I interviewed Molino uh, last week for Wired 868, and um, he, he made it clear, really, that uh, he, isn't, he isn't comfortable in the current setup, and, and he, he pinpointed the national head coach, Angus Eve. Uh, he said that he believes that uh, he could still do another two years at, at this level, uh, in his opinion, at the top level. And, uh, of course, Angus Eve's contract expires, uh, as far as we know, in March. So uh, I suppose he's, he's leaving a, a door open according to what happens uh, after Angus's ten years of, is over. Yeah. What, what are his issues with the national coach? Uh, well, <laughs> he, he got a very, very blunt interview. But I suppose, uh, in short, he, he doesn't uh, believe that, that Angus uh, has the, the tactical know-how to really operate or to be successful at this level. And uh, he, he isn't happy with uh, the way the, the, the squad, the players are being treated uh, by the TTFA in general. Uh, but I suppose they are, they, are, they are linked to the TTFA essentially. Or the, the person that they see as handling their team is Angus. So, so they're, they're not happy with, uh, with, with you know, the treatment that I suppose they get under, under Angus Eve. Uh, I would say that uh, by no means is Melino... I'm the only person. Uh, in fact, uh, even uh, after he did a story, you know, there were one or two players who actually publicly uh, applauded him or, or, or spoke kind of complimentary about his, in complimentary terms about his interview. Uh, but of course, over the last, you know, year or two, um, you know, I spoke to some players off the record, really. Melino is the guy to go on the record and just lay all his cards on the table. That's one of the things I wanted to find out because, you know, of course, Molina made some very, very disparaging comments as it relates to Angus Eve. And of course, as you just mentioned, a number of other players have backed what he has said. Do you know if they had any discussion with the normalization committee at all before any decision was made whether or not he's going to continue playing for TNT under the current setup, given the fact that Eve's contract was just recently extended and the Gold Cup yeah. was in July. So you would have wondered whether or not in between some kind of discussion would have had to have taken place yeah. with the TTFA before they decided to extend Eve's contract. I, I did ask Molino that, that question directly, if he had spoken to anyone within the, uh, let's say, the normalization committee, because, of course, right now in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, there are only three people who are active, really, within the TTFA. There are no standing committees that are active. Mm. So the three members of the normalization committee, they are, uh, they are the technical committee, the marketing committee, the medical committee, everything else. Uh, I asked him if he spoke to, to any of those gentlemen. He didn't answer directly, but his, his response to that is that he doesn't really see the point. I guess that's based on, on recent interaction with the normalization committee over things like uh, player... Uh, stipends and, and that sort of thing. And, and I got the impression too that the players were stunned the way things happened. Uh, first, Angus told them, according to the players, that he had resigned immediately after he lost to America. Uh, they felt that the results were, were, were so poor they didn't you know, expect really to have the coach come back. Uh, and not only did Angus not really resign, but the normalization committee actually brought him back. And uh, I think that that gives uh, the feeling they have is that it, it really makes no sense uh, if, if they are prepared to give them another contract, I suppose. Mm, but the, but the, the mere fact that they extended the contract would suggest that they probably would have thought that it was okay to extend this contract, given notwithstanding the issues that came out of the Gold Cup, 
But yeah. to, to make a decision along those lines, your head coach is, is probably the most important person in that setup. And if the players yes. are not happy, then it would be counterproductive to then extend his contract. So, you know. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, when, when they find out Terry Fennick, uh, the national team was 103rd in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, after two years under the see we are now 102nd. Uh, and Haddad's comment uh, having extended the contract was, um, they think Anders brings stability. So we, we, we can only assume that the stability he's speaking about is staying at 102nd in the world because there's barely been any, uh, any improvement in terms of the rankings since then. But yes, it seems that the normalization committee is, is happy with this. Yeah, there was a report that came out in the last couple of hours from the TTFA, um, Lasana, about a 23-man squad named by Angus E for their opening uh, Nations League, League match. I haven't been able to see the squad itself, but does this squad reflect any absence of any senior player that may, uh, may, may, may be yes. caught up in this, in, this, in this situation with not I, being I happy? I would think so. I mean, Molino's interview, for instance, he pointed yes. out uh, Marvin Phillip, that he felt that uh, based on how, you know, so many players who were challenging, and, it, and he, he didn't put it across that they were being disrespectful to the, to the coach, but he, he said certainly they had questions and they were not really happy with the answers and so on. And he suggested that Marvin Phillip, you know, uh, maybe that would be the end of him. And then Marvin Phillip and Sheldon Bato, along with, with Molino, are the three uh, football members who negotiate on behalf of the players with the NC. Uh, and again, you know, he, he got the feeling that, you know, um, they rather not have those guys around, so it'll be, you know, much easier for the, the incumbents, that would be Robert Haddad, the Helmer, the TTFA, and Angus Eve, you know, to, to go about their business essentially. Um, neither Bato or Marvin Phillip were there. They were among 13 players, I think, who, or 14, 13 or 14 players who were cut from the Gold Cup team. Um, but they in particular stand out because uh, out of the three goalkeepers, two of them are uncapped. Uh, the other one has 44 minutes of, of, of international football. And that's it, among the three goalkeepers selected. And that is um, a big risk, you would think going into a two-match window. Um, and yeah, again, Bato is out. Bato played all, all three games at the, at the Gold Cup. And uh, he, he's out of the team totally. I, I thought he was one, one of the defenders who had a, a pretty decent Gold Cup tournament, which might be reflected by the fact that he started all three games. Mm. You know, but he's also out, yeah. um, along with Jovin Jones, Alvin Jones. Uh, again, I don't even look at Alvin Jones and say that he, he uh, didn't represent his country well during the Gold Cup. He's out as well. So definitely a, a few surprising uh, omissions there. Yeah. I saw a report in the Trinidad newspaper yesterday, Lasana, about Brent Sancho, who is a regular correspondent here on, on the Sports Mac Zone, um, issuing a statement to the TTFA to address Molino's claims and find a solution to some of the, the issues, issues there. Um, uh, how do you find that story, given the fact that, um, as Leighton just put on the table, um, there was, since the conclusion of the CONCACAF Gold Cup, some unease over where Trinidad and Tobago's football was. And now Sancho is suggesting that the TTFA should have a look. Well, um, after tournaments, it'll be, I think it's mandatory that the, the coach does a report, a technical report, that would be assessed by the technical committee. He'd be kind of brought in to discuss how the tournament went uh, before the gentlemen on that committee would, would look and kind of uh, ponder into the direction the team is headed. But there is no technical committee in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, Robert Haddad, Nicolas Gomez, and Nigel Romano obviously do not have any football background. There has been no word from the TGFA that even the technical director, Anton Corning, was in any way involved in, in any decision here or in assessing um, the, the recent competition. So there, there just seems to be nobody to speak to. I mean, it's, it's ironic that the name of this committee is, is the Normalization Committee because this, this couldn't be what FIFA would consider normal business. FIFA itself runs on, on dozens of standing committees. They don't expect Infantino and his, his general secretary to, to, to know everything. But this is just how our football is being run at the moment. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you this? The, you mentioned that there are about 14 players who have been cut from the Gold Cup, the Gold Cup team. Yeah. Given 
Molino's a legacy. Few, a few injured, by the way. I think maybe four injured and the other nine just, just cut, yes. All right, so given Molino's legacy and given what he, he means to Trinidad and Tobago football, is it possible that this current squad that was named has already been lost to Eve because of, the, of what these comments that came out from Molina, given that this is a, a certainly a, a very, very perplexing situation for Trinidad football. And Molina coming out and throwing the head coach under the bus, so to speak, yeah. does it have an impact on these news players who have been selected? You th what do you think? Definitely. Uh, I mean, I mean Molina wasn't just a player. He was actually on the scenes. He was captain. Captain as well, players. yeah. So, so it's very, very upward for Angus. Uh, I would say in, in Trinidad, players do not earn a lot of money at all in, in the uh, domestic league. I think that's an understatement, really. So the chance to get a, a national call-up, that 1,000 or 2,000 US you, you, you get for the game, it is something that the players honestly can't afford to, to turn their backs on because that's the equivalent of two, three, even four months' pay. For, for a local club. So for the most part, the local players are going to shop, they are going to take the call up, you know, but when it comes to uh, the boys, um, you know, really believing in, in, in the instruction given by the coach and, and so on, um, and this is going to really have a difficult time motivating the team. Maybe that is partly behind, you know, the drastic changes that have been made to the squad. Mm. All right, Lasana, we're going to leave it there. Sad story coming out of TNT. You have Curacao on, on Thursday, and Curacao isn't, isn't a bad team, and a TNT um, in a spot of bother. Uh, let's see what happens on Thursday. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Okay, back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.